Hey there, I'm going to do a video today on taking ice hockey video footage captured from an ice hockey arena and I'm then putting it to Sony Vegas, doing some image manipulation and then rendering it out so it can be uploaded to Vimeo. So I've got the project properties I generally start with in here so you can review this to see if this is useful for yourself. I'm not going to go through them in detail. And what I need to do first is go grab my media. So I'll go to File Import Media. Uh, navigate to where my media actually is. Click the first one, shift click the last one, and we'll open those up. That'll bring it into the media window here for me. What I'm going to do to begin with is I'll drag this guy down to the uh, timeline down here, and that gets me all of my video down in the timeline. I'm also going to insert a video track, and the reason that I do this is I actually like to put a title on the videos that I'm playing with. So right click again, I'll insert text media go choose the template that I want to use, paste in the text that I want to play with basically at this point and we'll do that and that'll insert that beast. Um, you can reposition this title if you hover over it uh, wherever you want on the screen. You can also move the frame later as well if you have to on the video track but this is the easiest way that I find is just to do it up front. And the other thing I like about this is I like to have my video titles a little bit longer. So I like to drag this guy so that it's around 8 seconds. So I'll just make him just a little bit longer, something like that. And it's nice to have a fade in, fade out. So um, I also find that the, the volume on the uh, video camera I have is pretty loud. So what I'll do is I'll drag this down uh, 5 decibels or so, just to make it a little bit less. But if we do a quick play on this, you're going to hear a bit of hockey noise and you'll see... <laughs> So that's really the, uh, the the beginning start of what the framework of the video is going to look like. I have a couple adjustments to do. I find generally hockey arena lighting can be challenging and one of the things that we want to do on that is uh, actually change the video effects here so that levels, if you go under the all levels tab here, we'll grab brighten and bring it down. I find that brightening it all the way that it's default of 0.7 is too high, so I make it 0.85. You'll have to play with this based on your own camera, but this generally is a good level uh, for my personal um, experience in our camera. So that gives me the uh, level on this event, but it hasn't done the whole um, entity here. You'll see this, if I click on this one, it has the levels brighten, but if I click on the next one, it does not have any uh, at all on the video effect, uh, video effects, so we're just going to basically get rid of this for the time being because we'll, I'm going to copy that in in a second. Um, the other thing that is about uh, Sony Vegas is it has this property called resample or smart resample. This doesn't do a great job with a hockey puck on ice. In fact, I find high motion objects moving. This thing seems to blur them and not live the Christmas that you sometimes like. So what I've taken to do is I disable resample on all of my uh, sport videos that I uh, record and try to play back. I find this to be a very important aspect to it. So I've now done that on this one clip. So again, if you look in properties, you'll see disable resample set, and we have that thing there. What I want to do is get it across the rest of them, and there's a trick that I learned that if you go and copy this uh, entire clip, which you can now paste it somewhere in the timeline, what it does allow you to do is if you select the rest of the clips, all of them, so they're all highlighted now, if I come here and I right click on one of the other clips now, I have this ability called Paste Event Attributes. And what this is going to do is it's going to apply that Disable Resample and the uh, Level Brighten to all those clips. So if you watch, these are all going to change here. And if we check properties on any one of them, after they, I'll just do that first. You'll see that right now the properties in this guy is actually still Smart Resample. So let's go back here. I'll just highlight the whole thing and I'm going to paste that event attributes that I copied there. You'll see the Brighton has now appeared on all of these guys and you'll also see that on any given one of these that the uh, properties is now showing a disable resample. So just a quick way to get that over there. So um, so that's really, if I'm doing a quick video upload, that's what I do. Oh, forgot one thing. So I do like a different transition. So I'll go to the transitions tab and I'll grab the page peel drag it onto one of the borders between two clips and that will have applied the page peel transition to all of them and if we zoom in have a look at that guy it's going to look something like this when it goes <laughs> nice nice transition I think for uh, the little customization issues that we do and essentially at that point now we're on to the point where we save it and we go and re-render it so 
This is the part you can spend many, 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 many um, hours figuring out the right settings. So I'll give you the ones that I currently use. I work anywhere between 6 and 26 megabits per second in the rendering. J basically that number uses the amount of information that it's going to use for its encoding. And um, 26 I use for if I'm doing like a 10 second clip and it's a highlight reel or something like this. And I'll use 6, 8 or 10 depending on the quality of the video that I want to be output when I'm doing a full game just because the file size it's playing. Generally I end up, I've come down to 8 megabits per second but 10 is fine as well. So let's go look at the, the template for this so you can actually see the settings that are in here. So um, it's ABC, that's the way that I'm recording. I am using high def for this. I'm using the 1920 by 1080. My profile is high, um, and I don't remember what the uh, entropy uh, setting was, but I know that everyone always recommends Cadillac. And I use the 29.97, um, or 30 frames per second, basically, is what we're doing here. Um, it, I'm in progressive st scan, I'm not in interlaced mode, so make sure that one's set that way. And this is the value that is matched to the 6, 8, 10, 26 here, so I just changed them between here. And if we have a look, I'm going to cancel out. You can just so you can see the difference between here. This will just be 10 on the bit rates, and this guy here will be, if I customize here, it'll be 26 the whole or whatever the the max rate that it recommends that you would do on this one here for rendering. So um, I do find that if you do render at this level, you certainly get more detail. Like you will actually see face through the face mask at this level, whereas down at six, there'll be much more blur in that for certain. So it's not going to be a perfect render, but it's 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 basically uh, what I've settled as being acceptable for my needs. So um, this, these AVCs are actually underneath the Sony hierarchy in Vegas Pro if you're trying to find them. I, it's under the Sony AVC one here. And then basically at this point we just do a render and this guy is going to start rendering the video for us. And that is the uh, quick method that I've uh, come down to for what I do for rendering my, uh, my hockey videos. And I generally find that when uploading to Vimeo, their compression works well with these settings. So hopefully you found this useful. There are many other uh, tricks and tips that I do use during certain, like, you know, editing portions and such. But if you did like this video, hit a like for me. And if you'd find it useful and want to see more, maybe subscribe or leave comments and other questions you might have. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.